Welcome once again to the glass studio of Feral Glass. I'm going to show you how to do a glass project from start to finish. And so I'll be doing several small episodes that I'll edit together for this video. Here's just a look at my workstation here. On the left side I've got it set up for what I do a lot of, which are my tall, thin garden spirits. I've also got another area over here set up for other glass projects. Um, so I can just keep going with what I normally do and then do special projects in the meantime as well. Here on the right I've got all my glass storage, the different colors of glass that we'll be going through. And then a light table in the corner, a grinder, an assembly area, and we'll be doing the glass assembly and soldering right there. So let's go up here and take a little look at the kind of materials we'll start with. First off we've got the actual pattern. I'm going to be making a hanging peace sign for a client who's requested one. So I use some graph paper to lay out the design. And now we actually have to cut those pieces out so that I can start cutting the glass to fit those shapes. We use a couple of different types of scissors, just regular types of shears that you might normally use. And that we're going to use to cut along the edge. But these are special what are called foil, foil shears. And they have a slice right down the middle. You can't really see it. But when we make our cut, it's going to cut out a little tiny slice of paper to leave room for the solder line. If you don't use these special scissors and you just use regular scissors to just make a cut, then your piece will grow wider and taller as the solder fills in the gap. So just to show an example of this, and we won't cut the whole thing out here on the video, but I will take the regular shears and go around the outside edge where I really don't need to worry about a gap that's going to be filled in by the solder. I can cut along this way. And as you can see, when I need to, to take account of the actual solder lines that will be part of the piece, I use my foiling scissors. When I make this cut, it actually cuts out a very thin strip of paper, which usually gets clogged into the thing. I use a small exacto knife to poke those out. But this small bit of paper that gets cut out leaves room for that solder line so that it doesn't make your piece expand or you can keep it the size you intended. Especially important if you're doing something that's going to be framed or put in a window. All right, now I've got all those pieces cut out and just kind of laid out here so you can see how they will all go together. Of course, those big gaps won't be there. There'll be solder lines. But now is the time to choose the glass. Now this client has actually chosen a single color, this really nice green that she wants throughout her project. But I have a lot of glass and a variety of different sizes that I store here. And it's just a nice way to poke through and find what you want. In our case, we're actually going to be using this really nice, what's called a green wispy glass. I'll hold this up into light for you so you can see how the sun comes through that. Also, I have a light box here. and We can lay this glass sheet down on the light box. And this is good if you're going to use several colors of glass. You can actually see how the different colors or tints go together. So sometimes there's a gray tint or you know, some warmth, some coolness to a color that you might not realize until you really put it next to something else. Now once you've got your glass and you've got your pattern cut out into shapes, you need to actually cut the glass to fit those shapes. Now, some people do it differently. I actually choose to have a little glue stick. And frankly, Staples glue sticks seem to work better for me than other brands that I've tried. And that just helps me adhere the piece to the glass lightly. But it comes off when I wash the glass before I assemble it. And it also allows me to assemble the pieces so that it uses the most of the glass and I have the least wastage prop, uh, possible. I would normally put all these on there and then start cutting, but to show you, I'm going to start cutting right now. This is a glass cutter just like the ones you, you might use to cut window glass, except it's got a nicer, you know, stronger, uh, special metal tip and an oil reservoir that automatically lubricates the blade as it cuts. As you push on it, a little bit of oil comes out and lubricates that blade. Now all I'm going to do is actually just cut this little section off here so I can work with it. I hope you heard that little zipping sound, because that's the sound that a good glass cut makes. I'm using what are called running pliers. You can see they're slightly curved here. And when I squeeze on it, it's going to just break that glass 
along that curve line. Let's see, what is my cut? There we go. I can lay this aside. And separate this piece here. So then when you're cutting curves, do the inside curve first. But that's really where you're likely to get it to go wrong. Inside curves are a lot harder to do in glass than these outside curves. So you're more likely to may have a mistake and have to start over. But you're less likely to have a mistake if you make that cut in several smaller approximations. And this actually releases some of the internal stress fractures in the glass. Those aren't very good cut lines. But I use what are called grosing or grousing pliers. I can actually take these pieces now away. And if I am lucky, this piece will snap off well as well. There you go. And I save these nice pieces because they're so cool looking, and I use them in other projects that I make. So now we've got our inside cut, and it's just a matter of trimming up the outside. Make a little cut. And little pieces like this, a lot of people throw them away. I actually keep all my little pieces, and these are my green pieces here. I'll use them for projects eventually. I've got ideas. Now one extra thing I'll say about the glass is you don't really cut yourself on the sheets of glass so much. It's these little tiny bits that hang out, and they can just poke you. So you more like get little tiny pokes, or a drop of blood might come out. But that's why a whisk broom is always kept handy in the studio, and you whisk your surface down often. Now that I've got the pieces cut out and laid on the light table, which is where I use for my pre-assembly area, what I need to do is grind each of these pieces so that it's just exactly the right shape. And these are pretty easy grinds we're going to do. It's a pretty simple pattern. But here's the grinder itself. What it is, it's a platform you grind on. Underneath here is a reservoir of water. And the water is whipped up by a sponge onto the uh, onto the uh, the grinding wheel itself the bit and that keeps uh, the bit cool and the glass cool to keep it from shattering while we grind it now, I'm not going to make you sit through the whole grinding process and it gets kind of noisy here so I hope you can still hear me you just take the piece of glass use the grinding wheel to make sure that the piece of glass is ground and fit exactly. And this is especially important on panels where many pieces are going to fit together. The piece side has a lot of open space in it, so not that big an issue here. And once I get it ground, I can actually take off the pattern bit. I know which number it is. It's important not to lose that. I actually have a little reservoir of water here that I just wash things off, get any any dirt, any oils, and also any if that, any of that uh, glue stick is still stuck there. That's water soluble as well. The next step in the process is foiling the glass, putting a thin copper foil around each of the pieces, and this is what the solder is going to adhere to to hold the piece together. Now I'm using a black backed foil. And it's, hard, it's easier to see the effect than to talk about it. But if I didn't have the black backing on there, when you looked through the glass, you'd see copper reflecting back at you. And once the piece is finished, and I use a black patina or oxidizer on the piece, it will have a black look through the piece as well as on the surface of the piece. So I use these rolls of foil, I cut them to the proper shape, and then adhere each piece is kind of in, encased in a little bit of foil. Now we're at the stage where we're actually going to solder the pieces together. All the pieces are foiled. They're laid out next to each other where they need to be. I've got my equipment laid out. As soon as I start to solder, though, I'm going to be wearing a respirator because you don't want to be breathing the fumes. And uh, so I'll talk now as the soldering iron is heating up, explain the tools, what I'm going to do. And then when I put on the respirator, I'll become noticeably quieter. Uh, this is actually a liquid that's called flux that actually cleans up the joints and it makes it easier for the solder to adhere to them. So you actually use flux, go all around where the solder is going to be applied. And 
I actually solder on these uh, special rubberized mats that are heat and chemical resistant. You don't have to use those, but I just find my workspace cleans up easier this way. And uh, when you're when you're in the business and you're doing a lot of production, you got to think things through like that. So I got my flux, a little brush to put it on with. This is the kind of solder you use. It's not the same solder you use for your plumbing projects. Uh, it's what's called a 60-40 mix, 60% tin, 40% lead. You can get lead-free solder if you're going to be doing anything that's going to be touching food. Um, soldering iron, they come in various uh, um, wattages, and I use a rheostat to control that heat. And a couple of uh, pairs of needle-nose pliers, because this woman has asked for a piece sign that she can hang in her window, so instead of having the brass legs like my garden pieces do, I'm going to attach a couple of little jump rings to it. That's going to be the final stage of the soldering. And after soldering, we take this outside, and uh, actually in my garage I have a place where we wash it and apply what's called a patina, which is an oxidizer, which gives it either a black or a copper, whatever kind of color coating you want the, the solder to turn to. Now I've got my respirator on, so you probably can't hear what I'm saying. Take a little bit of solder, and I'm just going to pack these pieces into position. Just a little bit of solder just to keep, keep things from moving around. Okay. Go back here and finish this up now and finish it off. Now what you're going to do with the solder is have a nice little little bead like that. I don't know if you can see that now. And once we get the front of it all done, I'm going to flip it over and do the back. Now the piece is soldered, and I've actually moved it out into my garage where I have my patina and wash station. This is actually just an old bathtub that a friend of mine built in here for me, and uh, so I can drain, you know, wash things and at a reasonable height. What you do is you use what's a chemical oxidizer. It's called a patina. This is the uh, the black patina that I'm going to be using on this piece. And just put a little bit of. I use these yogurt containers great way to recycle some things around the house. And when you add this, it actually oxidizes the surface of the uh, solder. And you can get patinas in copper, silver. I just prefer black because it kind of gives a good kind of contrasting frame to the, uh, to the glass pieces. So you solder, you uh, patina this on both sides. And then we actually use a uh, a neutralizer to neutralize the flux and to wash the piece clean. So it's part detergent, part neutralizer. So I've applied the patina to both sides of this, and now I just a couple of drops of this concentrated neutralizer and detergent. And I'm going to wash both sides of it. It takes off any greases or oils that might have gotten on there through the assembly process. You'll notice I am wearing latex gloves whenever I'm working around any of my chemicals. And when I'm doing the soldering, you didn't see the respirator, but I wear a full mask respirator. And I, I vent my uh, studio to the outside, not to the house. Then you just wash this off. And uh, voila, I believe we have a nice little peace sign. It's got the two little rings on it so she can uh, hang this from her window. I'm going to give her some fishing line, that way it will just appear to be hanging there in space. So, Pretty much you've got the techniques now of what it takes from start to finish. This was a small project and uh, certainly a lot more open space than your regular stained glass panel. But the same techniques apply. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little instruction.